My favorite time to burn fat is when I'm fucking sleeping. Yeah, you should try it sometime. It's a lot better than pounding the fuck master in the goddamn gym. Day 19 of my ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting challenge. I'm, I'm starting to believe that this is the way to go. Like, I'm actually considering making this the majority of my eating. Now, I'll still, you know, like I said, I'm going to do a cyclical ketogenic diet once I'm done with this challenge. Um, basically, twice a month, I'll have a carb day. And this is to allow for social concerns... Um, you know, going out to eat in restaurants without having to fucking sit there for a half hour with the fucking menu and go, oh, can I have this? I wonder if they put sugar in that. Motherfucker, I'll just order chicken wings because that's about the only thing I know that they won't fuck up on me. This morning, I weighed in at 195.7 fucking pounds. I'm almost back down to where... I originally was going to keep my weight. However, since I now know that that's not my cap, you see, I thought that was where I was stuck. But I do believe that because of my fat-burning ability now, that I can continue down into the 180s. So I'm going to see how far I can take it. I'm going to remain in a fucking calorie deficit to try and get down to the proper fucking weight. Hi, Sugar Walls. Fuck you. Fuck you, too. See, it's what she comes home and says to me every day. So I will continue to get back down to, you know, out of the BMI fucking lie of happiness of being overweight, which I've been. I'm no longer, I, I beat the obese number, now I'm going to beat the overweight number. And I'm going to see how, if I'm happy with the way I look, and if I want some more fat on me, or some more muscle, you know, try and build up a little muscle at that point. Not sure how to do that on a ketogenic diet yet. I'm hearing that it can be done, but... Things that, uh, that have changed since the last update, my energy levels have improved during the day, but at the end of the day, I still hit the wall. And it's, it's really, I think that's just pretty much what I gotta accept, is that after so many hours of being awake, I'm gonna get fucking tired. Also, Sugar Walls has been uh, maintaining the diet as well. She's uh, started to count the the carbs a little because she was a little worried she might fall off of ketosis. One of the things uh, that's been going on is Sugar Walls um, has been fighting with high blood sugar for a while, as in pre-diabetic-ish. She's been fighting blood, her blood sugar levels for three years. Her blood sugar's been high. And um, since she's been doing this diet with me, her numbers have begun to fall to closer to normal levels. We're not completely there yet, but we're talking from 150 in the morning fasted to 103, 104. And um, after two, three hours after she's eating, she's come down from, uh, I want to say, 140, 150 range down to 110, 113, which is pretty good three hours after eating. You know, I don't even think I do that. I don't know. I haven't really checked myself, but because I've checked myself in the past and uh, my blood sugar levels have always been fine, which is weird because I've been eating the same fucked up shit everybody else has. Just means maybe I'm not as insulin resistant as a lot of people. Um, but it all comes down to insulin resistance. So definitely we're making progress on that front with the ketogenic diet. Um, Sugar Walls has lost about four pounds. Um, for the majority of this, she wasn't counting calories. She just now started not so much for calorie counting as more of the making sure her carbs are good. Um, as you know, I started out at 204.5 and now I'm at, let's see, what the fuck am I at here? Now I'm at 195.7, so I've lost a considerable amount of weight in the 
eight or 19 days that I have been on the ketogenic diet. Now, as far as fasting protocols, I haven't been doing anything all that intense. I was going to do 36s this week, but then I figured, why skip the 24s? So I'm doing a 5-2 style deal without the, uh, you know, without worrying about the calories of the meal I eat after the 24-hour fast. So that's two 24-hour fasts a week, and the rest is 16 and 8s for the rest of the time. Um, flexible on the 16 and 8. To be honest with you, it doesn't seem to affect my results that much. I try and shoot for the 16 and 8, but give or take an hour here or there based on schedule, <clears throat> you know, it hasn't made much of a difference in my progress. So, my hunger levels have been almost non-existent. The only time I did a 36-hour fast uh, and I experienced some hunger physical hunger, no cravings, um, and it didn't last very long. It was like 15 minutes of stomach burn and then on with my life. Also, energy levels on the 24-hour fast seemed fucking great. You know, it was just as good as it was back when I just did fasting with all the carbs I could fucking eat. Only when I did that, I was fucking craving and hungry all the time. Sugar is an addictive substance. It is a drug. Keep that in mind. I was, I've been addicted my whole life. I've drank, eaten all of the same shit that everybody else that's gained weight over the years has. Since cutting that stuff out, my cravings have all but vanished. I, you know, I occasionally miss certain things. Like I'll see a picture of a fucking Cinnabon on TV or I'll be walking through a mall and see some carby shit that I like, you know, like some of them Annie's fucking pretzels and stuff. But I think I can, without the, the craving issue, I think I can, you know, get through to the point where I'm doing the cyclical ketogenics. Is in twice a month, I'll go and eat that shit, you know, and I'll replenish my glycogen and then I'll deplete it again. And according to what I've seen from cyclical ketogenic diets, that you, once you've produced the enzymes and switched to become adapted, it doesn't, you know, you don't overnight snap out of it with one carb up. You know, like you have to do it pretty regularly to switch back. Same way, same thing with switching over. Apparently it takes your body a little bit of time to fucking switch between being a fat burner and a carb burner. Um, I've been in solid ketosis this whole time. Uh, anywhere from moderate to large a couple times. Um, I think it's based largely on not using the proper amount of energy. Um, like, the, I think if you use more energy, you obviously use more of the ketones. If you are just sitting on your ass, you're going to piss a lot stronger than if you're running around and doing things. So, I, I am planning an, a video series after this explaining why this works, explaining how to do it, you know, because I get a lot of questions. What can you, can you do a diet plan for me? Can you do this? Can you do that? I'm going to start a series of videos where not only do I update you on my progress with it myself, but I'll tell you what you need to do to do this fucking diet how you can replace your fucking carbs with desserts that are just as satisfying that fit within a ketogenic diet and how you can become a fucking fat burner instead of a fucking carb burner. How you can lose tons of weight without going and pounding the fuck master in the gym or, you know, going seven times a week to exercise or being active. Like, you can do a lot of this while sitting on your ass at home. And it really, you, your weight loss will be a little slower than the guy pounding the fuck master. But that guy's spending a large portion of his day doing things that aren't, to me, very fun. You know, if you enjoy that shit, go right ahead. Go get yourself trained for a triathlon and run fucking until your legs fall off. Me personally, that's not how I like to spend my time. You know, if I do go to the gym, it's maybe once a week to lift some weights and... I haven't even been doing that lately, so I'm losing a little muscle mass, probably. You don't use it, you lose it. So, anyways, that's it for this update. 
the uh, I'll try and get the next video out next week. I got a lot. My day job's keeping me pretty busy right now, so it's hard to put out videos for this time. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick fucking update on this diet and you know how it's working. I've already talked about the artificial sweeteners last week. Um, if you didn't catch that video, you should go check that out on uh, which artificial sweeteners are good to use. Um, I use them heavily and they haven't affected my cravings, hunger, or anything still. And they haven't kicked me out of ketosis. They haven't really affected me at all. And I probably go through six or seven packets of new stevia a day, which is erythritol and um, stevia mixed together to cancel out the aftertaste. Shit's great and doesn't have any other shit in it uh, as opposed to Truvia, which has natural flavors that some guy jacked off into the fucking packet for you. And I looked up what natural fucking flavors are and it didn't give me the answer to that. It's still a fucking mystery what the hell natural and artificial flavors are. I think it's yet another tactic used by food companies to fuck you over in some way. You know, they're so deceptive with their fucking labeling it, it's insane. I mean, you pretty much, it's a minefield. If you're not getting a whole food of some kind, you're gambling with what they put in it. And, you know, for many years I didn't give a shit. And, but right now, the only thing I'm really concerned about is keeping my carb count down and keeping, you know, my insulin down. And, unfortunately, a lot of these food companies like to sneak shit in there that will hinder that. Oh, and uh, one more thing I did discover that recently I did an experiment. You know, I was curious, does it matter what the fucking carbs are? You know, does it have to all be in your salad or can you have some processed food carbs? Now keep in mind, if you fucking do the processed food carbs, you're gonna fucking use up your carbs really quickly. So I would recommend not doing this unless you've done a 24 hour fast and you're literally having your meal with 50 grams of carbs to play with. And I did this yesterday, still lost weight, still was in ketosis both two to three hours after the, the, the meal and I consumed about 46 grams of carbs, some of which were like, I, I got a serving of Fritos with my meal. And I didn't get any cravings out of the deal. I didn't get any hunger. It might have been what led to me getting tired. I don't know. But it didn't kick me out of ketosis. I was in strong ketosis in the morning, moderate ketosis before I went to bed. Um, so I was still producing plenty of ketones despite having a large chunk of carbs in a short period of time. Because I was con concerned about that. I wasn't sure. Um, also for you potato chip lovers out there, one snack, this is a little tip, you know, for the, those of you that have hung with this video all the way through. Um, one of the things that you can substitute, and it's a little hard to find, um, it turns out there's like one little fucking brand or something in the store, and I don't even see any at Walmart, but, um, pork rinds. Yeah, you may think eating the skin off of a fucking nasty-ass pig may suck, but you know what? I'm sure by the time it's been cooked to death that any bacteria from the shit they roll around in is probably fucking gone. So, f pork rinds are a good substitute snack. Season pork rinds however you want. You can dip them in onion dip. You can dip them in other dips. And it's really just essentially eating fat with a little bit of protein. Um, so if you're a chip snacker, I recommend pork rinds. You can substitute pork rinds for chips or crackers and uh, munch on that. But to be honest, you shouldn't have to snack too much on this ketogenic diet. Um, I think Sugar Walls might disagree with me a little bit on that, but I find I get through the majority of my day on a couple cups of coffee with maybe a small snack, you know, because I just don't get as hungry as often, if at all, on this diet. So, you know, I pretty much pound a shitload of fucking food, sometimes in the morning for breakfast, and, you know, have a smaller meal later, or vice versa, have a small meal 
you know, by breakfast, I mean at around 11 or 12 in the afternoon. Um, you know, and just tailor your, your diet that way. So, but you shouldn't have to snack a shit ton on this. But, as I've said a billion fucking times, I'm not an expert. I'm just a fucking asshole. Have a nice fucking day.